Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, what you're looking at here is the CJ3B welder Jeep. And I have to make a set of cowl supports for a guy, so I pulled this in the shop today. And you can see the welder's sitting there. I got it cleaned out around there. Uh, most of the body is gone. Uh, this one is in terrible shape. Uh, you can see how the body is just, it's just a disaster here. Um, I was able to pull the cowl support out that goes here. Uh, I have that over on the bench, and that's what I was sawing out on the bandsaw and punching with the Rotex punch. And I'm going to make a set of these. They're very specific to a 3B. They only fit a 3B, um, not a 2A or a 3A. It'll be too short. So these are very specific to the 3B, and that's what we're making. And uh, the other side is still in there. I don't know if you can see with the camera. You can see that side still in there. And I'm going to make a left and a right, but I only needed one for a pattern. So, uh, I'm going to go and uh, get the passenger side done first, and then uh, the driver's side next. So, that's where we're at, and I'll meet you back over at the bench and, and show you how we get that made. Okay, this is what it took out of the CJ3B, and this is what happens to most of them. The bottom's always rusted out. Uh, this one's torn at this particular bottom hole. And they get rusty behind there where they're attached to the body. So from that, I flattened it out, and I made a, a pattern like I normally do. You've seen me do that before. That's just cardboard. And then from there, I have... Um, an actual pattern made out of steel that's what I'll use in the future when I make these anytime I'll have the pattern ready to go and um, compared to a 2A or a 3A this doesn't have so many holes in it uh, it has your three main holes here a half inch hole here for your fuel tank sender wire and one 5 8 hole up at the top so uh, we'll put these holes in next and uh, I'll be right back with you and show you how I do that. Okay, on this 14 gauge that we're using, that's kind of tough material when you start getting in big holes. The half inch hole and the 5 eighths inch hole, uh, I could easily punch on the Rotex. Uh, this is an inch and a half, this is an inch and seven eighths, this is two and a quarter. Uh, and that's too much um, tonnage for that little Rotex. Uh, I could punch them in the iron worker. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem. They would punch okay, but um, I, I usually use that for heavy steel. Uh, sometimes it kind of beats up the, the light 14 gauge. So I punched three three quarter inch holes. And we're going to use some Greenlee knockout punches. Um, electricians use these and they, they make a whole lot of uh, conduit sizes, but they also make regular. Um, fractional sizes so there's an inch and a half this inch and seven eighths I got a two and a quarter in there and the thing about punching the three quarter hole is when you put your your pulling screw through there uh, you don't have to worry about center or anything up that's a perfect fit uh, there's no slop left and right so you just put that in cent it centers itself and you punch the hole so I'm gonna punch all three of these right now uh, using three different size punches Okay, I've got the inch and a half set up. You can see we've got our cutter on the bottom, our die on the top, and we just have a pressure screw here, and that'll make a very nice clean hole. Uh, I have to get the uh, impact gun on there, that's the fastest way. Uh, you could do it with a, with a hand wrench, but it's much faster with the impact gun. And uh, that'll just pull that right through and make a nice clean hole.
Okay guys, here's our support as it's coming along. I put a bend on this side just in the straight break. Um, nothing fancy. Uh, first thing I did was set my bevel square to the angle I wanted. And then that just bends right you know, to what you want. Uh, these, are, these are handy little things. Basically a carpenter's tool, but they come in handy when doing angles on the brake. I've got the bottom bent. The top goes over that. That'll get spot welded together. And just for now, I have this other tab kind of bent out of the way. This, this is going to have to go through a flanger. And it's going to take a big uh, inch and a quarter flange all along this edge here. So I just have that out of the way for now. And as this comes up 90 degrees, that'll lay over. And then we'll hammer it flat. Okay guys, I'm bringing this flange up and being 14 gauge, it's, it's tough, but it's uh, not too bad for the machine. Uh, this area right in here, uh, right where the major part of the curve is, has to be stretched the most. You can see that the, the piece is kind of, it's almost sitting flat. It got twisted up in here, but as this, as this starts to smack that and get stretched out, I've got a stretching head in there. Uh, this is going to relax and lay down nice. Uh, now I've been going on low speed with the machine but this also has a high speed setting and I'm gonna put the high speed setting on now and give it one more final planishing pass and I'll stretch it out the final little bit and then it'll lay perfectly flat on the bench so uh, let me turn the machine on and, and switch it to high speed and uh, I'll show you what that looks like <laughs> Okay guys, you can see now it's sitting flat on the bench and that's critical because your side panel is going to be up against that and they get spot welded together. And I know it might be tough to see but that is a perfectly flat panel all the way across. And that's why we had to stretch this, this section out so much. Uh, as that came up, it was just starting to wrinkle the ends up so critical that gets stretched out real good. Now this edge has to get bent over a little past 90. So I'm just going to do that by hand. Uh, I'm just going to knock that over with a hammer and dolly. Get that into final position. And I'll be right back with you to show you the finished product.
Okay guys, here is the finished panel. I think you can see the profile of how this front section goes. And this is what we started with. You can see that was just not much left to it. And there is the finished piece. And I'm going to show you, uh, uh, I think I got a 3A or a 2A uh, cowl support. I'm going to show you the difference between that and a 3B and show you why this is so specific to a 3B. Okay, here is, this is a CJ3A. And this is the one we just made for the 3B. And hopefully you can see the difference in height on these guys. Hang in there while we get the camera set up. Uh, you know you got the high hood on the CJ3B and they put that filler panel in there. And they have to be this tall to, uh, to reach the cowl. So I tried to go out there and see what was available and see uh, if there were CJ3B specific ones. Uh, what I did find was a lot of guys were selling these shorties for CJ3Bs. Um, so I couldn't really, if I, if I tried to go out there and just buy one of these, I couldn't find an accurate reproduction or one that was tall enough. So, uh, like I say, a, a couple guys tracked me down and wanted a set. And that's what they're going to look like when you get it. So I hope this helps out anybody doing a CJ3B. Uh, like I say, this, this only fits the 3B and it's very specific. So if yours are rotted out and you need a new set and you're having a hard time out there finding them, uh, just shoot me a comment and uh, be happy to fab them up for you. So that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you watching. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, tell a friend. And um, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.